part two because I ran out of memory to fix that. I want to show you now what happens when I energize the quilt. First, there's no clamping between the, the C and the I. Uh, ferrites, I'm going to go ahead and apply nine volts across here for about a second. Now, do you think that's enough to cause clamping between the two pieces? And the answer is yes. Now, I've, I've actually measured with the scale, the clamping is about, it's a good two pounds or so of force. But I can pull them apart, I break that magnetic flux, whatever it is, that's what we're trying to understand. Once it's broken, I'm asking you to predict, will there still be clamping or not? I mean, these things magnetize? The answer is no. I have to do it again. All right. Now. I'm going to try a much lower voltage. I've got the power supply turned all the way down. It's still got 23 millivolts. I'm hooked up to the negative of the power supply. Positives here. I'm going to couple for about a second. Is that enough to cause clamping? Your prediction, please. Okay, clamping, yes or no. And the answer is no. Are you kidding me? That's only uh, 23 millivolts divided by 2 ohms, that's like 12 milliamps. That's not enough to generate enough field at all. So now I'm going to charge her back up with the uh, 9 volt battery. Same direction. We are all working in the same direction here. About a second or something. Now we have clamping. Alright, now I'm going to put the current in the opposite direction. So this one was positive and this one was negative. Now I'm going negative to positive. So I'm going to put a measly 23 millivolts across the coil but in the opposite direction. Now do you think that's enough to declamp? It certainly wasn't enough to cause clamping. There's your question. Declamping, yes or no? I'm going to hold this. Let's see. It goes down to about 15 millivolts. I mean, it's like nothing. Is there declamping? Yes or no with that tiny little um, current? Something like uh, 12 milliamps. And the answer is no. It's not enough to cause declamping. Okay. That actually surprised me. <laughs> I have seen a declamp at that. But not this time. So let's go up a little bit in voltage. I'm going to take it up to... Uh, yeah, I'm learning stuff too. Oh, I know why. It's because I clamped it at 3 volts, and this time I clamped it at 9 volts. So I've got more magnetic flux going in there than I had at 3 volts. Ah, and it de did declamp. Uh huh. But let's turn it up and just see if I can recover a little bit from my embarrassment. <laughs> so we've got, um, okay, 0 0.62 volts on there. Let's see, now I'm ready to try and see if that will cause declamping. So in the opposite direction is what I did with the 9 volt battery. Let's see, what am I doing? Oh, here we go, sorry. <laughs> see, it drops down to about 0.45 volts. Oh. oh, you know what? I just felt that core something kick back. It's declamped, folks. I am 100% sure. I was holding those. The flux came out of there. It, it It's flyback. <laughs> I felt that. Ah, yeah, totally declamped, but I felt that, folks. Now, let me show you something here. I was scared to touch it. No, no. 0.6 volts does not cause a shock, but I felt a shock when I pulled those apart. Why is that? It's because the energy stored in the magnetic flux came out when I pulled these apart and I felt it. Now I've also put a LED across there the same way and I've blown I just blew the LED because the, the flyback voltage wow! <laughs> I felt that. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and publish that although it's a little embarrassing to 